Free speech activist Lindsay Shepard has been permanently banned from Twitter. She won't be the first person associated with the right to get kicked off the social media platform, and she certainly won't be the last, but her vaporization at the hands of a big tech company does send a particularly nasty chill through the free speech community, mainly because she's one of its most vocal and fervent activists. And I have a feeling she'll continue to be even without having the Twitter platform, though as she noted, she will no longer have the opportunity to correct falsehoods and slander that are routinely said about her on Twitter. She doesn't yet know which tweets caused them to pull the trigger, but she has a suspicion it was an exchange she had with a transgender activist who goes by Jessica Yaniv. Now, this got a very tense reaction on both sides. Yaniv was tweeting about Lindsay Shepard's uterus and a reproductive abnormality about which Lindsay has been quite open, and Lindsay Shepard responded to Yaniv, well, at least I have a uterus, and referred to Yaniv as a male. Now, Yaniv is transgender. That's Yaniv's Twitter profile right there. But Yaniv also believes that no debate should be allowed, no discussion should be allowed, actually was cheerleading when Lindsay Shepard's account was suspended by Twitter. Now, as a private company, Twitter has the right to decide who's on the platform and who's not. The issue that I want to expose is that Twitter claims it stands up for an open forum and a free platform, but in actuality exposes its own double standards routinely. Take a look at what happened here. Now, presumably Twitter was enforcing the section of its policy that prohibits dead naming or misgendering. It's actually in Twitter's policy that you are not allowed to, on Twitter, refer to a transgender person by a name or pronoun different than the one they prefer to use. But those same rules also prohibit talking about someone's body in a sexual way. Here's a tweet from Yaniv referring to Lindsay and her fiance. This is expressly prohibited by Twitter, but that tweet is still up. Or this tweet, which is taking aim at Lindsay Shepard's body, something that as well would go under the sexist targeted harassment that Twitter bans. But again, Yaniv still has a Twitter account. Big tech is not an ally to free speech. Big tech is not actually facilitating any open fora. It is simply imposing its own worldview on digital communication. Why that's so dangerous is because governments right now around the world, including Canada, including the UK, are getting into bed with big tech, imposing the government definition of free speech and hate speech on private companies who seem all too willing to drop the hammer down on anyone that speaks in a manner that they say is out of line. Now, people on the right are going to say, let's boycott the platforms, but in reality, Facebook, Twitter are still the market leaders when it comes to social media communication. Ideally, these companies need to be held accountable by their users and hopefully change things a little bit. Now, these are multi-billion dollar companies. They have GDPs that exceed those of many nations. They are probably not going to heed the call here. But when people like Lindsay Shepard, who's a very measured, eloquent advocate on free speech is deemed too controversial for Twitter, what is there for anyone else? The response to this is more speech. Censorship is never going to solve any of the problems. What this exchange between Lindsay Shepard and Yaniv shows is that the other side is not interested in a debate. They are interested in shutting down anyone that does not 100% in lockstep go along with what they say. You don't win the debate when your opponents are silenced. All you do is delude and muddle and obscure the debate. True North is always standing up for free speech, but we can't do it alone. If you can join my Heritage Club for just a few dollars a month, you'll get access to some great goodies exclusively at True North. You can do that by heading on over to tnc.news. For True North, I'm Andrew Lawton.